Jamie here, back with section four of chapter 24 on where we will talk about stems. Uh, when we talk about stems, usually the stem is referring to the main axis of the plant, of the shoot system that supports the plant's weight, uh, keeps them upright. When we look at the end of the stem, usually there is a terminal bud. So that would be this thing over here. Okay, the terminal bud usually has bud scales uh, that are sort of protecting uh, the bud scales kind of protect the first leaves that are kind of shooting out here and then the shoot apical meristem right here that's sort of growing in this region right here um, and this causes primary growth in other words the lengthening of the plant uh, in that early stem we see three types of meristematic tissue uh, remember, meristematic tissue is actively growing regions, uh, so cells that are growing, growing, growing. So we see protoderm, the ground meristem, and the procambium. So the protoderm you see more kind of on the outside here, so that's going to give rise to the epidermis, whereas the ground meristem is more kind of in here. Uh, that's going to give rise to uh, the pith and the cortex. So we can actually kind of show this sort of kind of branching off there. And then the procambium uh, becomes the vascular cambium or the vascular tissues. Uh, so the procambium kind of in these little corn seed shaped things right here uh, become, if you look down here, the vascular bundles with the xylem on the inside and the phloem on the outside. When we compare the stems of a dicot to a monocot, I will look first at the dicot stem. On the dicot stem, we often talk about the herbaceous one. We'll talk about the woody ones here a little bit later this video. Uh, herbaceous usually means uh, no wood or no bark, so usually green, uh, which means they can photosynthesize. Um, in a dicot, the vascular bundles are in a distinct ring. So when you look around, you look around the uh, stem, you have your pith kind of here in the center, the ground cells here. And then each of these vascular bundles right here would contain, uh, if you kind of zoom in over here, a, the vascular cambium, vascular cambium, which is the meristematic tissue right here is going to produce xylem to the inside and phloem to the outside. And they just look like little acorns almost, and they're just boop, 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 boop. They're all the way around the cell. Okay, so it's in a dicot stem, they're in a ring. In a monocot stem, uh, we see instead of a more organized ring structure, uh, we see that the vascular bundles are more scattered throughout the stem. So down here is our stem with the epidermis on the outside, a lot of sort of ground tissue filler here on the inside, and then this vascular bundle, they're just sort of scattered, boom, 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 boom. They're just kind of scattered all around. Uh, I, I call them evil monkeys. I don't know. I just think they kind of look like evil monkeys. If you zoom in on it, like here's two, two eyes, a nose, and then like, you know, scary mouth. So they have like sharp pointy teeth here or something like that. If you kind of look at it sideways. Okay, I think it looks kind of like evil monkeys, uh, evil monkeys with a hat on. <laughs> okay, uh, what, what we have is, again, similar type of stuff. We have the ground tissue sort of all around it. And then we have it producing phloem to the outside, uh, the vascular cambium kind of right in the middle of between the two, and then xylem all towards the inside and phloem towards the outside. Uh, but again, the main difference is that they're sort of scattered throughout the stem versus just being a ring around kind of the outside of the stem. In woody stems, uh, normally we're talking about dicots here. Uh, they ex exhibit both primary and secondary growth. Okay, so remember primary growth is when the plant and the roots are growing 
the shoot and the roots are growing longer, taller, or deeper into the soil. Whereas secondary growth is increasing the girth. So they're getting fatter. They're getting bigger around either the trunk, the stem, branches, or the roots. Okay. Uh, secondary growth is only usually in conifers, which are like the pine trees and woody dicots. Okay. The vascular cambium in woody stems uh, will form a ring okay, around the stem. So if we look up here is the vascular cambium and it's going to make this ring right here that goes all the way around. And just like we talked about in the sort of the herbaceous or fleshy stems, it's going to produce phloem to the outside, which is normally shown as blue, and it's going to form red on the inside. So as that continues to grow and grow and grow, okay, you see the phloem here on the outside, and then xylem here on the inside. So P for phloem, X for xylem. Uh, you will notice that there are some like lighter colored rays that sort of radiate outwards. Okay, those rays are parenchyma cells. They permit lateral conduction of materials. Okay, so you have your, your pith and your cortex kind of right in here in the center and the cork and so forth out here. You have lenticels, uh, lenticels where you have air, uh, O2, CO2 going in and out. Okay, and so these, the rays just sort of help uh, food storage from the phloem move in for storage in the stem and back and forth. Okay, on the very outside is where you get the bark on the outside of the woody stem. Uh, that is what we call cork, which is produced by cork cambium. So like vascular cambium produces the xylem and the phloem, cork cambium produces the cork. Okay, uh, there's also some cortex and some phloem. Uh, cork is just impregnated with subarin, uh, which just makes it waterproof. Okay, and that's why in like some wine bottles and so forth, uh, they have synthetic ones now, but they used to use cork, okay, which is a part of a tree. And that cork is waterproof and they could seal up the wine bottle and it would keep it from leaking okay, until it's ready to be used. Okay, uh, some you can actually kill a tree. Uh, by the process called girdling, okay, where you peel the bark and the phloem away from the tree. Uh, settlers, when they'd move into an area, would girdle the trees, let them die, and then cut them down. Sometimes deer and so forth can do that uh, just by doing their scrapings or rubbings or chewing on, the, chewing on the bark around a tree. They can actually kill the tree if you remove uh, that layer of active phloem there on the outside. When we look at wood like a tree, like when we think of wood from a tree, that secondary xylem builds up year after year. And there's actually a difference based on the time of year. Okay, so you have spring wood and summer wood. Okay, in the spring, when the tree starts actively growing, there's lots of, lots of water. Hey, the xylem, the vessel elements are really big around and they're taking a lot of water up to the leaves okay, for a lot of photosynthesis happening. And then it's the summer into the fall wings on, it gets hot okay, and there's less water. The vessel elements are much smaller. So you get kind of this pattern of big vessel elements to small and then it kind of goes dormant over the winter and then the next spring it starts with spring wood again. So you start to get these annual rings, right? So if you cut down a tree and you look at how many rings there are, you can get a, an idea as to the age of the tree. And you can also tell, you can also tell if there were really dry years or more wet years, depending on uh, the size of the xylem. As the trees get older, uh, some of that xylem in the very center will actually plug up with organics, materials, and so forth, uh, and they'll stop functioning, stop working as xylem. Uh, they think this kind of gives strength to the tree, although some trees, even after that sort of rots out, and squirrels dig their little nests and stuff in there, or woodpeckers, uh, and they live inside that tree, they can still stay upright for years and years with the active xylem as well. Uh, but that heartwood is just sort of plugged up xylem that would be in the center or middle of the tree. 
Finally, we look at some different kinds of stems, way stems are used sort of out of the ordinary. Uh, there's two slides here. The first one shows three, the stolen. Uh, stolons are sort of horizontal above ground stems. Uh, when we think of the strawberry plant over here, uh, if you've ever kind of been in a strawberry patch, there's these little runners and they can actually form little nodes that form roots that can actually bloop, pop up new plants. Uh, so it can be kind of, uh, can help anchor them, but it can also sort of run from place to place and help sort of spread that plant out. Uh, rhizomes are underground stems, horizontal stems under the ground. Uh, they can be long and thin, like some grasses have rhizomes that are more thin, or they can be more fleshy. Uh, there's different uh, like irises and stuff that will have that sort of fleshy rhizome. Uh, they sort of store food. Um, some can actually have little bumps called tubers, which we are, which we call potatoes. Potatoes are tubers, uh, which are just rhizomes that sort of flesh up, bump up, and store starch. Uh, these are often uh, often used for reproduction, asexual purposes. They will stay underground over winter, uh, whereas the green part sort of dies off on the top. And then the next spring, they'll form little eyes, little buds that will grow into new plants uh, and flower and so forth again. Uh, the third one, corms. Corms are bulbulous, although they are not bulbs. Onions are not stems, they're leaves. We'll get to them in the next video. Uh, corms are some of the uh, flowers that you may plant in your flower beds. You buy bulbs. We call them bulbs, but technically they're not because those are leaves um, that are just sort of underneath the ground and they'll flower, they'll reproduce, and then the, the top part will die off and the bottom part stay underground over the winter. And then if they're perennials, you know, the next year they will keep growing back from that. And finally, the last three succulents we're probably familiar with. Some of us like to grow succulents. We'll have the little pots with the cactuses and stuff. Just reduced leaves and then the stems are real big and fleshy uh, for storing water. Usually live in very dry, arid climates. So the little water that they get can be stored there for future use. Uh, some plants will have tendrils, uh, whereas the stem will actually coil around objects to help them climb like morning glories, reach up towards sunlight. Uh, plus, humans have a lot of uses for stems. Uh, sugar cane. Sugar cane can be used for table sugar, um, for sweetening things. Uh, cinnamon actually comes from a stem. Okay, if you've ever seen uh, kind of those sticks of cinnamon, uh, and then they grind it up to the powder that maybe we're more familiar with. Uh, we use them uh, pulp from trees to make paper. Uh, we burn wood for fuel, okay, in fireplaces for heat. Uh, we use them, again, importantly, for building products, uh, for two by fours and for lumber, for building things, desks and houses and all those kind of things. So uses, humans have put stems to good use uh, throughout human history.